الحمد لله الذي هدى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اجتبى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فأما الإنسان إذا ما ابتلاه ربه فأكرمه ونعمه فيقول ربي أكرما وأما إذا ما ابتلاه فقدر عليه رزقه فيقول ربي أهانا كلا بل لا تكرمون اليتيم ولا تحاضون على طعام المسكين وتأكلون التراث أكلا لما وتحبون المال حبا جما صدق الله العظيم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of this universe, in many ayahs of the Qur'an al-Kareem, reminds us of the reality of this world, and not only reminds us, reveals the facts behind the creation of this universe. There are certain facts that are so hidden behind things, behind such thick curtains, thick walls, there is such a huge barrier between us and seeing those facts that normally human beings cannot see them until someone would bring those things up and show it to us. There are a lot of facts in the world that are still behind the scene and they cannot be seen the way they are. The amazing part of it, in today's day and age, as much as people believe that the people of all days didn't know the facts about this world as much as we know, now we understand the world better than they did. It's in reality the opposite. It looks like they understood the reality of the world better than we do. It doesn't, it looks like no one in the history was deceived by this world as much as we are. To the extent that now we are in a situation not only that we don't have time for our relatives and for our neighbors, we don't even have time for our own families and our children, and not even that, we don't even have time for our souls. And then we feel that we understood the realities of this world. Just bring any new research, anything new, and it could be the worst lie in the world presented to the world on a name of a research, and people would think, oh yes, this is the right understanding. People in the old days didn't know this. They couldn't understand these facts. We understood them because we have all of this technology. A very simple example of it, one of the recent things that I heard, and in fact the way it was presented to me, but the research is, as far as I was told, that now there are some people who believe dog saliva is more pure and healthy than human being saliva. It's a new research. So the question that was posed to me by non-Muslim, people from a church and a college, that if now the research is telling us the saliva of the dog is more clean than the saliva of our own, of human beings. And religion says 
that dog saliva is unclean, you have to wash yourself if it will touch you. Shouldn't we now change that? We should change that thing now because in all days people thought that these animals, all of them, are unclean. But now we have ways of finding out. We have ways of investigating, of doing some research. We have such microscopes that will tell us all the ingredients of it and everything that's in it. And therefore now when we compare this with the human being's saliva, it finds it, our finding tells us that dog saliva was better than the saliva of a human being. So now we should change the order of the religion, the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa la'ayazu billah, the order of Rabbul Alameen, the order of the creator of that dog and the creator of this human being, the one who created both, and he tells us the fact that what is, which is better and which is not, and which is clean and which is not, but because of our findings, we should change the order of Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala and the order of the creator. And generally, believe me, this is the general attitude of people nowadays, that our research is nothing but is telling us that we are more advanced people, we are better people, we understood this world better, now we can understand dogs better than people understood them in the old days, we can understand all the other things better than people that understood it in the old days. And therefore, we should always, whenever we come up with new investigation, with new research, with new findings, we should attribute ignorance to all of the all people, including وَالْعِيَازُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْعِيَازُ بِاللَّهِ أَنْبِيَ عَلِيمُ السَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ And the scripts and the books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all the people, our forefathers, everyone, they didn't know anything. We are the ones who know it. That is the reason. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again and again reminds us in Quran of what the realities are. We don't see the reality the way it is. And as I said, it looks like no one in the world was more deceived, deceived by these things than we are. When now people will give preference to a dog over their own children. It was going on anyway, but now it's more clean than your own child. It's more healthy than the saliva of your own child. Don't eat from the same plate where your child ate from. Don't drink from the same cup that your child drank from. But you can have all of that connection with the dog. In fact, kissing on the tongue of a dog and the dog is licking the whole face. That's all perfectly fine. And we see it happening. There's nothing hidden. There are some thick curtains there that are covering our hearts, the hearts of people. <coughs> they may be called the curtains of research, of knowledge, which in reality brings only ignorance and keeping us away from seeing the realities of the world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Qur'an al-Kareem to show us these realities. Qur'an al-Kareem is a book of realities. It has nothing but realities about our souls and about the place that we live in. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Quran, لَقَدْ أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكُمْ كِتَابًا فِيهِ ذِكْرُكُمْ أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ We sent a book down to you that talks about you. It's our manual, the manual of our life. It tells us everything that is good and bad in this life. أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Don't you understand? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why is he saying أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Don't you understand? And really we see that people don't want to understand this point and they want to bring their own manual of this life. No, this is how we are going to spend our life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that way of life will be totally destructive for you. It's going to ruin your life. It's going to destroy you. This is the way of life that will bring you all the peace of mind and get you everything that you need and you're supposed to have in your life. The main thing is people don't realize the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the main problem behind everything. We don't realize the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, every person is trying to prove his own greatness. I'm great because I'm mas I have done master in, in this field. I'm great because I'm wealthy. I'm great because I live there. I'm great because I, I, uh, I have this type of education. 
And every person in the world is trying to prove that his own greatness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have prescribed a salah, a beautiful method of reminding us five times a day, Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. If anyone would try to prove his greatness, we have to remind the person, Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. This Allahu Akbar means a lot. And there is a reason why this form of dhikr is being used in salah continuously. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Continuously the person is being reminded that this world and everything in this world will try to prove to you that these, these things are great and those people are great. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding you that greatness belongs to Allah alone. All the greatness, all the alama, all the respect, it all belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah Al-Kahf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us few examples of how things are hidden behind scene in this world. How we don't see the realities of the world. In the story of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam in Al-Khidr, I'm sure most of us have read those ayahs of Al-Quran al kareem and we know those stories where Al-Khidr alayhi salatu wasalam, he killed a boy, he made a hole in the ship, and he went and he fixed a wall without charging anything for it. And Musa alayhi salatu wasalam was upset with all of these situations because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to show Musa alayhi salatu wasalam that the knowledge that I have given you is not the knowledge of things that would reveal the facts of the world. This is the knowledge of the Sharia. But here there is a person who has the knowledge of what in Sharia is called Al Taqweem, how Allah runs the universe. This is the asrar of Allah. These are the secrets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was asked about the basic beliefs of Iman, about Aqeedah, one of the things that he emphasized on is to believe in Al-Qadr, in destiny, that everything good and bad is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the same thing, Ilm al-Asrar, Ilm al taqween This is, a lot of times people get confused with Al-Qadr, that what does it mean? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has have destined about a person, that he's going to go to Jahannam, and therefore that person is going to Jahannam. So what's wrong? If I mean, Why this person is going to go to Jahannam? Why does he have to be punished? Because Allah had already destined that for him, and it was already written for him that he will do this, and he will go to Jahannam. So why the person is still going to be punished now? The thing is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not write these things to make these per people do it. This is ilm al-asrar. This is the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about the secrets. He knows this is how it would happen. Let's put it for the argument's sake. If it wasn't written, would this person do anything different? No. He won't do anything different. A father says to his son, a son who have made the same mistake 10 times, and he goes back, Dad, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I will never do this again. Father says, okay, that's fine, son. But I know you would do it. Now the son goes ahead and he does it again. Can he come back and say to his father, I did it because you said it? No. Father said it because he knew he would do it. But the son didn't, the son didn't do it because the father said it. These are ilm al-israr, the secrets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe just a story. A king had someone working for him. And that person had a habit. Every time he would do something, he would see something, he would say, this is good, and what Allah, whatever Allah does is good. So even when he would do something wrong, or anyone over there would do something wrong, he would say, this is good, and whatever Allah does is good. One day, the king cut his finger. And this is the habit of this man. So he says, this is good, and whatever Allah does is good. And just imagine what happens to the king when he hears these words. Okay, you're saying this is good that I cut my finger. So he laid him off. When he said yeah, that you're laid off, so the person says, this is good, and whatever Allah does is good. So the king is even more upset now. That you're saying about this, this is good too, that I'm laying you off, you lost your job. He says, this is good, whatever Allah does is good. After a few days, the king is out hunting. And he lost, he got lost over there. And all of a sudden, 
few robbers approached him there, and they said to him, look, this is our territory. Whoever comes here, we don't let that person go out of this place alive. So we have to kill you. And he begs them, no, please, don't do that. No, there is no way. This is our territory. Whoever comes in this part of the land, we don't let him go alive. I'm the king, I'm this, I'm that. Still, that, that means nothing. In fact, we look for better people. The better person we kill is more honor for us. Now, as they're ready to kill him, they see that his finger was cut. Oh, we don't accept people like this. Your finger is cut, there is something wrong in your body. We need a perfect human being to kill. Just like, you know, when we go for Qurbani slaughtering the animal, you look for a perfect sheep. So they say, you know, we just perf slaughter perfect human beings. If there is any defect in the body, we don't kill. Okay, go back home. So he goes back home and he realizes whatever that man said. So he calls that worker back. He says, you know, whatever you said, this is good. When I cut my finger, you said, this is good. Whatever Allah does is good. It really, I saw it, that when I was out there, they were about to kill me. And because of my finger, the cut in my finger, they didn't kill me, so I, that saved my life. So he says, not only that it saved your life, it saved my life too. He said, how? He said, because after you cut your finger, you got upset with me, you laid me off. If I was with you on that day, they would have killed me because I have no defect on my body. So this is good and whatever Allah does is good. Simply means, everything, main thing is the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ilmullah. If we realize the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the main thing that we need to understand and we need to make our children understand, people around us understand, and not only believers, even the non-believers need to realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all greatness belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever we have, really, these means these things mean nothing. All of our people like us, regardless of what position they may be on, or whatever we acquire, and because of that, sometimes we see ourselves nice clothing, and we start walking in certain ways. All of a sudden, arrogance come because of my clothes. Arrogance come because the car I'm driving. Arrogance come because the type of job I have got now. Arrogance come because the type of people that I'm sitting with. But how long are we going to have these things for? For how long the person is going to have these things for? And if we really, if we really believe that these are the things that will give us greatness, just imagine yourself being in your cover, under the ground, what will prove our greatness at that time? How are we going to prove the greatness to the angels at that time? That no, I'm that great man. Why? How come? Prove it. I don't see your dress on you that was making you feel so great. I don't see you having that job anymore. I don't see you living in that area anymore. I don't see you having those certificates and those degrees anymore. I don't see your wealth with you anymore. I don't see your relatives with you anymore. I don't see your citizenship with you anymore. Those were the things through which you were proving your greatness. I don't see those things with you anymore. What will prove our greatness? Look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran al-Kareem. When the time of death would come, those people who are depending on anything else in this world to prove their greatness and feel that they are something because of having that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those people will be requesting Allah and begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, قَالَ رَبِّ ارْجِعُونَ حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَ أَحَدَهُمُ الْمَوْتِ At the time of death, this person will say, Ya Allah, send me back to the world. لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلُ صَالِحًا So that I can do some good deeds and bring some good deeds with me because I forgot to bring those. I was depending on other things. Or and speaking. And as I, as I said, this is the book that reveals the facts. The facts of this world, the fact about our life. So that I can do something good through the things that I have left behind. I have left behind a lot of wealth. I have left behind a lot of things behind me there. And I really had a lot of things through which I could have got these and done these good deeds. A lot of abilities, a lot of strength at certain point in my life. Ya Allah, I couldn't do those things. Irji'oon. Send me back. La'alli a'malu salihan fi ma tarak. So that I can do something good with things that I have left behind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kalla. This will never happen. This will never happen. 
he can never come back. This is the only thing that is that is going to help us even when we leave this world. A'mal al-Saliha, the good deeds that we need to take with us from here. This is the effect of our life that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not only through his words, throughout his life, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam practically proved to the world that the thing that you really need to acquire in this world is good deeds. Things that will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometime we will have a lecture saying that morality is the greatest thing. Another person would say, no, ibadah is the best thing. Remember, the most important thing is whatever would please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And things that please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those that were practiced by Muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they, that include all kind, of type, all, all, all kind of moralities, akhlaq, ibadah, everything that we do in our life, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have given us the best instructions about how to perform these things. Following the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, following the ways of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, finding what did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do in these situations, these are a'mal al-saliha. These are the good deeds and that's the only thing that will help us once we are placed in our graves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us tawfeeq to follow the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to realize the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the greatness of this deen, the greatness of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the greatness of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so that we can follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, follow the deen and fulfill our responsibility towards the deen and the book of Allah and, and, the, and the messenger of الله عليه الصلاة والسلام أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين